welcome to the Flute Center, and I want to welcome the Sugar Hill Salon Group. Um, we have some great pieces tonight, some featuring our very own uh, Alyssa Mena from the Flute Center. Um, so without further ado, Sugar Hill Salon. happy to be here. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank the Flute Center of New York for having us. Uh, again, we are from Sugar Hill Salon, which is an organization that is based out of Harlem, providing free concerts to the community in Harlem, and uh, really focuses its energy on championing the work of black and brown composers, while also showcasing the virtuosity and artistic uh, fervor of black and brown musicians <laughs> in New York City. So. Uh, that first piece that you heard was Besame Mucho by Consuelo Val well, Valasquez, there we go. And uh, she is a female composer from Mexico that um, basically created, unbeknownst to her, one of the most popular uh, Spanish 
uh, language songs in history. It's actually been recorded uh, more than any other Spanish uh, language song in history and has been covered by a number of uh, popular artists, including Frank Sinatra and the Beatles, to name a few, um, after it was translated to English in 1944. Um, but it is a long uh, tradition in a lot of Spanish-speaking communities to love that song, and I hope you guys did too. <laughs> so um, for the next piece on the program, we're gonna be uh, playing the Habanera, which is uh, one of the movements of a larger movement work by Paquito Rivera, which is called Aires Tropicales, which translates to tropical winds or tropical air. And so the Habanera is a particularly uh, close um, dance that Paquito would have known because he's a Cuban um, clarinetist and saxophonist, and the Habanera originates uh, from Cuba. So um, in the original quintet version, um, it's usually for clarinet, bassoon, and oboe, but given that we have a beautiful flute player here, I'm excited to add, swap out the oboe for a flute, and I think it particularly gives a certain, I don't know, uh, right, a little, a more of a zhuzh to it. So uh, we hope that you enjoy this piece, the Habanera by Paquito Rivera. solo alto flute, and all the flutists here in the room know there's not a lot of repertoire written for alto flute. 
So it was part of what inspired me to write a piece. This piece was originally intended as an homage to my family, so my family's from Cuba. Um, and part of this concert, the theme, we're all Hispanic, and we're all playing Hispanic music. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was appropriate for the program since it was t intended as an homage to them. What it became, um, as you see in the program, there are six movements. They're all short. Bear with me. It's not super long. Um, and they each tell a story. So I think I want to take a moment to read the, the titles and just give you an idea before I play. So down to the roots, the first movement is El Baile del Progreso, which means the dance of progress. So what was originally intended as an homage to my roots became looking more of how I felt at the time, how we were all feeling during COVID, during quarantine. I was in California, my family was in Miami. I missed them, I didn't see them for a long time. And during this time, it was very uncertain. And the story kind of highlights that so the dance of progress is the first movement. The second movement is the love that's always with you. Hold on, my iPad is waiting out. One second. There you go. All right, the second movement, el amor que siempre se queda contigo, which is the love that always is with you which refers to family and friends, whether they're near or far. The third movement, la ansiedad de volverse, the anxiety about becoming somebody, which is what we definitely feeling in your last semester of a COVID <laughs> degree, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. The next movement, la fragilidad de las decisiones, so the fragility of decision making. Um, I utilize a technique of reusing or repeating repetition, right? A low C sharp, which we know is unfriendly on this instrument, so so nice of me to put that, low C sharp. It recurs throughout the entire movement, which is reminiscent of thoughts that recur. Um, the next movement, La Aventura del Crecimiento, so the adventure of growing up. And then lastly, Vivir en cada momento, to live in every moment. I hope you enjoy my piece.
this next piece is also kind of a COVID discovery for me because uh, it was at a time where all of us were separated, confused, hopefully not sick, but you know, just very, it was a very tumultuous time for all of us. And it was a moment we were all searching and seeking connections to make connections in our lives and to connect with other people. And for me, one of the connections that I wanted to make was with my identity as a classical clarinet player and as a Colombian American. And luckily for me, the connection wasn't too far away because the clarinet is actually really uh, prevalent in Colombian music, in traditional Colombian music. It can be heard in a lot of uh, older records and is kind of like a staple of that music. Um, and I wasn't the only person to uh, think of it. There's also a uh, composer named Mauricio Murcia, who was also a clarinetist who studied here in the United States and went back to Colombia. And he wrote a ton of pieces for clarinets that uh, commemorate different styles of Colombian folk music. For example, there's forro, there was, uh, we have uh, merengue, there's salsa. Uh, in this specific piece called Dimelo, he explores a Latin jazz type of style. Uh, Dimelo means tell me. To me, him uh, put, giving this piece this title shows kind of more of a lighthearted approach to this, uh, to this duo. Uh, it's originally written for clarinet and bass clarinet, but uh, luckily today we have a rendition for clarinet and bassoon, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> I, love, uh, I love a lot more than the clarinet and bass clarinet version. Uh, so I'm very excited, to, we're very excited to play this for you guys. I hope you enjoy Dimelo. And just as a sidebar too, Dimelo also means what's good. It's true. What's good? Like, and I'm also Colombian. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> we ha we look like Encanto up in here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Do you want me to feel it?
All right, so our next piece is called Divertimento by Ramiro Cortez. Uh, Ramiro Cortez was a Mexican-American composer uh, from Dallas, Texas. Um, he wrote in a very uh, kind of classical style, very similar to Stravinsky, which is pretty uh, obvious when you listen to this piece. Um, I think he was very much inspired by his Mexican heritage because his father was a concert promoter for some Spanish singers. So he, heard, he was exposed to a lot of different kinds of Spanish music throughout his life. Um, the first movement is only titled Allegro Moderato, which is a classical title for a piece. And it sounds, kind of has more of like a classical form. But the second movement is called La Malagueña, which is a word that refers to somebody from the Malaga region in Spain. This word is also used a lot in different types of uh, genres of Hispanic music. For example, you see Malagueña in Mexican music. You might see it in some Venezuelan music. It kind of pops up here and there. Um, it's a sad song, kind of uh, yearning for somebody. Uh, it's usually played on guitar or stringed instruments. The third movement goes back to a classical title, uh, Giocoso. And then the fourth movement is called La Petenera, which is a solo flute movement. This is interesting to me because it's also um, referring to somebody from uh, the region of Paterna in Spain. Um, but it's a, the folk story behind it is about a woman who sings about the damnation of all men which is pretty heavy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and it's a solo flute movement. Uh, you're going to see that Alyssa is going to switch to a different instrument at some point. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Uh, and then the last movement is uh, back to a classical title, Vivace. So uh, Cortez, I think, is trying to make this connection between his music and his craft as a classical composer.
that I wrote. It will be the world premiere. Um, <laughs> it is an arrangement of a very popular piece by Astor Piazzolla, who is an Argentinian composer, um, very famous for tango. Um, the piece is titled Oblivion, um, and Oblivion has been rearranged and arranged many, many <laughs> times. Everyone's heard it, everyone's played it, um, but the original being for the ensemble with the bandoneon and the percussion and fiddle. Um, I thought that it would be neat to feature this ensemble and I hope you enjoy my arrangement and some of the ideas I came up with. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're at the end of our program. And our grand finale is the world premiere of Yalil Guerra's De Congo y Caravali. Um, I discovered Yalil's music on YouTube, looking for music for this ensemble. Uh, musicians in the room, no, there's not that many, there's not that much out there, but there's so much waiting to be discovered. There you go. <laughs> Say that. Say it again. <laughs> and I listened to his whole album, and I just loved his music so much, he's going to watch this later. <laughs> I really do love his music, and I love that he's also Cuban, like me. Um, and I think it's a really special piece. De Congo y Caravali takes a lot of roots from Afro-Cuban dance. Um, the t movements are titled, we have Presto, we have Moderado, and then we have the Afro finale. Hope you guys enjoy.